right guys, moving on to theorem 5 and 6. Theorem 5 is Pythagoras' theorem, which we've known since grade 7, but we've never ever proved it. And in grade 12, there is something extra that we add on to the idea of Pythagoras' theorem, which is important. Now, there is no asterisk next to theorem 5, because you do not have to know how to prove this in an exam. So, you don't even have to write this down if you don't want. But, it is very nice to see why Pythagoras' theorem actually works. So, you know what Pythagoras' theorem says. It says, in a right-angled triangle, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. We know that. Okay, now let's have a look. If you have a right angle triangle, so I've got ABC. If, there's my right angle at A. If I draw down a perpendicular line so that it drops down to D, I basically divide my red triangle into three triangles. I divide it into triangle ABD, which I've redrawn each of these three triangles, ABD, ACD, and, and the original one, which is ABC. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to label angle B as X. Now, that means that every other triangle which had angle B in it must be equal to X. Now, this means that if I look at my little triangle on the left, the angle which I would call angle A in the little triangle is 90 degrees minus X. Now, where does that come from? Angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So, if one of the angles is 90, the other two have to add to 90, because 90 plus 90 will give you 180. So, if the one of them is X, the other one must be 90 minus x. Now this means that there's 90 minus x in my little triangle on the left if I label in my little, my individually drawn triangles. Now, simply because angle A is 90 degrees, if one is 90 minus x, the other one must be x because they have to add together to give me 90. The whole of angle A is 90 degrees. So that means that angle A in my triangle on the right is x. But that means my angle at C is 90 minus X because I've got 90 degrees at D, I've got X, and these three angles have to add to 180. So if 90 is out, the other two angles have to add to 90. So I've got X and 90 minus X. So I'm going to go fill in angle C in both of my triangles. Now this is the bit of Pythagoras' theorem which you have to know. Have a look at these three triangles drawn on the right-hand side. Each of them have 90 degrees, they have an x, and they have a 90 minus x, which means they are equiangular. Now, as soon as I say they're equiangular, theorem 3 says that any two triangles that are equiangular means their sides must be in proportion, and the triangles must be similar. So I have three similar triangles here. Okay, so let's have a look. In triangle, you're given triangle ABC, and A is 90 degrees. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that BA squared plus AC squared, so the two shorter sides squared added together, gives me the hypotenuse squared. Now we know that's what the standard Pythagoras' theorem says. So, let's have a look at our construction. We've already drawn our construction in and discussed it. We drew AD perpendicular to BC. So let's have a look. In triangle BDA, now BDA is the little triangle on the left. So that little triangle that I've drawn in yellow. And triangle BAC, which is the big triangle, which I've labeled in purple. Now what have we got? Well, I've already kind of given the game away and I've said that they're similar because we have equiangular triangles, but we actually have to write it out. Well, first of all, we have angle D is 90 in my little yellow triangle, and we have angle A is 90 in my big triangle. And why? Well, this was given. We deliberately constructed it so it was like this. Number two, angle B is common. Um, try and convince yourself of that. I labeled them both as X, but they're the same angle. ABD fits into ABC, so angle B is the same angle. Now, I said in the previous theorems video, or I think it was in theorem... It was in Theorem 3's video. As soon as you have two angles in a triangle that are equal to the two angles in another triangle, the third angle has to also be equal, simply because triangles have to add up to 180 degrees, their angles. So if you have two angles which are common, the third angle has to also be the same, otherwise they would never add to the same amount. So I don't actually have to prove that the other two triangles are equal. I can simply state that they are. 
So I can simply say that BAD, which is what's left, BAD in the in, in yellow triangle, must be the same thing as angle C. Now, why? I've labeled them in green in my separate triangles. Simply, they must be equal because they're the third angle of a triangle. I don't have to explain anything more than that. I did kind of explain earlier that they both must be equal to 90 minus x, but that was using sum of angles in a triangle, which is what I'm arguing for now. They must be equal since the other two angles are equal. Now, as soon as you have three angles equal, you know that therefore they're similar. Now, sorry, I've jumped onto a new page simply because I ran out of space. So I've crossed out my given, required to prove, etc., and I'm simply carrying on. So therefore, these two triangles are similar, which is great. And my reason? Angle, angle, angle. Now, that's theorem 3 right there. Theorem 3 says that if you have angle, 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 your triangles are similar. Now, as soon as triangles are similar, you know that their sides are in proportion. So BD is in the same position as BA, and DA is in the same position as AC. And BA is in the same position as BC. So I can make any one of these comparisons equal. So I'm going to compare BD to BA. It must be the same thing as DA to AC, which must be the same as BA to BC. Now, which one of these is useful? Well, what were we looking at? We were looking at BA and AC and BC. So I'm going to choose that I want a BA squared. BA squared was one of the sides squared. So I'm going to pick the first and the last ratio equal. Now if I multiply by BA on both sides, I'm going to get BA squared. And then if I multiply by BC on both sides, I'm going to get BD times BC. If you don't know what I've done there, I've simply taken the first two ratios and I've equated them. I've dropped the red one in the middle. And then I've simply written it in one line. So I've multiplied by BA on both sides to get my BA squared. And I've multiplied by BC on both sides. So I get BD times BC. Now, I can choose the other two triangles and, con and, and, and prove that they're similar as well. So in triangle ADC, which is that triangle, and triangle ABC, which is the big triangle. So what I've got here is, first of all, I've got a 90 degrees. I've got angle a equals angle D, which is 90 degrees, and that was given. Second of all, I've got angle C is common. That's the same angle in both triangles. Now, as soon as you have two angles equal, the third angle has to be equal. So angle DAC has to be equal to angle B because they're the third angle of a triangle. Now, this means you've got two triangles which are similar. Now, careful, the naming must be right. So ADC is similar to BAC, so you must have the name in the right order. And the reason, again, this is the third theorem, angle, angle, angle. Now again, I can use some ratios here. So AD is in the same position as BA, DC is equivalent to AC, and AC and BC are in the same position. So I can compare each ratio, each side, to its friend in the other triangle. So my blue sides compared must be the same as my green sides compared, which is the same as my yellow sides compared. Now, which one, two of these fractions do I want to use? Well, if you have a look, there's AC. Now, AC was the other side of the triangle. So I'm going to use the last two fractions, and I'm going to multiply by AC on both sides, so I get AC squared. And then I'm going to multiply by BC on both sides, so I get DC times BC. Now, if you have a look here, this means I've worked out that BA squared, which is one of the shorter sides squared, is BD times BC. And the other shorter side squared, which is AC squared, is DC times BC. Now, what was I trying to prove? I was trying to prove when I add them together. So what is BA squared plus AC squared? Well, it's my yellow BA squared was BD times BC, plus AC squared was DC times BC, which was my red equation. Now, if you have a look there, all I've done is simply done that. Now, I think BC is common, which means I can take out BC as a common factor. And left in my bracket is BC plus DC. Now, what is BD plus DC? If you have a look at what I've just drawn in on the diagram, BD, the yellow part, and DC, the red part, together they add to BC. So I get BC times BC, which is BC squared. And that's how you prove Pythagoras' theorem. You prove it using two similarities and then you add them together.
it's pretty nifty to see how it's finally done after using it for so many years. So there we go. BA squared plus AC squared is BC squared. Now you guys know this already. The reason we use when we use this theorem is we simply write in brackets after this Pythagoras. Now again, I'm going to say it. You don't need to know this theorem. Please don't learn it off by heart. We're simply showing it to you because it's very interesting to see where Pythagoras' theorem actually comes from. Right, let's look at the converse. The converse says it's exactly the opposite. It says if the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides, then it's a right angled triangle. So Pythagoras' theorem says if you're given it's right angled, you can use Pythagoras' equation. This is saying if the equation holds, so if the two shorter sides squared added together equals the hypotenuse squared, then this must be a right angled triangle. Now we don't really see this much. So if the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum, this is the converse of Pythagoras' theorem. Now you actually can look at this proof, it's on page 299 in your textbook, and it's very it's very interesting, but it's not examinable. So we're not going to go through it. Now, the reason we use for this is we say converse Pythagoras in brackets if we ever you need to use this. Now, often there's easier ways to prove lines are perpendicular. So in coordinate geometry or analytical geometry, to prove that lines are perpendicular, you can use their gradients. But often in geometry, there aren't any coordinates or gradients that you can work out. And therefore, this would be the only way to prove that something is a right-angled triangle. Now, why did we show you these theorems? The reason why we show you these theorems and, and the reason why I chose to show you the proof of theorem 5 is you must understand this idea. The line drawn from the vertex of a right-angled triangle. So if you go to the right-angled triangle and you go to the corner at the right angle, if you drop down a perpendicular to the hypotenuse, so there's the hypotenuse BC, and the line that they're talking about is the vertical perpendicular line AD. What this does is it divides your triangle ABC into two smaller triangles. Now, first of all, these two smaller triangles are ABD and ACD. They are similar to each other, and they're similar to the big triangle. Now, we use this idea in theorem 5, which is why we wanted to show it to you. But if you see this pattern in a question, you have three similar triangles. Yellow, red, and blue are all similar triangles, which is very useful because you can use any ratios that you want to within those triangles. So let me show you an example of where this is useful. This picture here, we want you to see this picture and go, oh my word, it's Pythagoras' theorem. Because there's a right angle triangle DEF, and there's a line dropping down from the right angle across to the hypotenuse. So I've highlighted the hypotenuse, which is DF, and there's a line from the right angle to the hypotenuse, and it's perpendicular. Which means Pythagoras' theorem says that there's three similar triangles here. So triangle EFD, so let's have a look where EFD is. EFD is the big triangle. Now it will be similar to triangle, now we've got to get the naming right. So E is the right angle in the big triangle. So where's the right angle in the other triangles? It's a G. Now F, GFE would be the red triangle. Now notice my naming. E is the right angle, so that is in the same position as G, which is at the right angle. F is the same angle in the big triangle and the red triangle, which is why it comes in the same place, and then the only angle left would be E. Now this is similar to triangle. Again, I would have to start with G, because that's where the right angle is. Now in my green triangle, D is common. So D must be the last letter, and E would have to be in the middle. So the problem with this, whenever you see Pythagoras' theorem, which is what I've just labeled there, Pythagoras' theorem tells us these are all similar, you've got to get your labels right. So find the right angle and write that down first. Then find the angle that's common to the big guy. And then you just put in the third thing. So the, as soon as you get the labels correctly, you can get anything correctly. Because this means that I've, I've used yellow there, which those aren't in the same position, but don't worry, I'll get there. This means that 
any of these combination of letters, as long as I use the same positions in each triangle, I can make equivalent ratios. Now have a look what this question says. This question says, determine the length of EF and ED. Well, let's have a look what we were given. We were given DF, which is 25. So I've highlighted in yellow that we were given FD, which is 25. And we were given GF, which is 9. So FD and GF are not in the same position, but I've just linked them because that's what we've been given. Now, what do we want? We want EF. Now, let's have a look at what else we know. GD must be equal to 16. So we know GD as well. So I'm going to highlight that as well. So we actually know one length in each triangle. Now, none of those are actually in the same position. Now we're looking for EF. So where are EFs in our triangle? EF is first and second, or second and third. Now if you have a look at that, I think I'm going to need to use the first two triangles that are similar. Because I have the two yellow parts, and I want the blue parts. They're actually the same side. So what ratios can I make? Well, EF in the first two triangles, that's in the first two positions. So in the other triangle... Who's in the same position? GF. Now I want EF and I know what GF is. That's why they're useful. Now this will be equal to FD, which is in the same position as FE. So last two letters in each of those triangles. Now EF is what I want to know. Sorry, sorry, I must write down my reason. Why do I know that these two that this ratio is equal? I know this ratio is equal because my two triangles are similar. So if this was me answering this question, I would write down my three similar triangles and then I'd pull out any ratio. And as soon as I pull out a ratio, I must reference which triangles are similar. Now, if I multiply by Fe on both sides, my Fe's will cancel at the bottom and I'll get EF squared over GF is equal to FD. Now I can multiply by GF on both sides. So I get EF squared is FD times GF. Now I deliberately engineer this because EF is what I want to know and I know FD and I know GF. So FD is 25 and GF is 9. So I'm going to multiply them together and I'm going to square root both sides and I've got 15. So go over this example again. It's very, very, very useful to write down as soon as you see the Pythagoras' triangle with that perpendicular line. Write down which triangles are similar and get the naming right. Because from there, you can pick out any ratio. Now, it's very useful to highlight. I did it in yellow. I just linked what I knew. And then I linked in blue what I wanted. So I could see which ratios and which two triangles I must focus on. Now the last question was ED. Now this is very simple because I have the hypotenuse in my big triangle is 25. I know EF is 15, which means I can use basically Pythagoras' theorem. So ED squared plus 15 squared must be 25 squared. That's what Pythagoras said. The hypotenuse is DF. Now you must write Pythagoras. And then very simple to work out. I basically subtracted and then I square rooted and I got 20 units. So You'll notice the last part was your stereotypical grade 9 Pythagoras question, but your first part wasn't, which is why we wanted to show you the proof. So you're going to have to practice that first idea about finding the names of the triangles and then building the ratios to help you work things out. Don't forget, practice makes perfect.